And you'll notice that uh, uh, he came in with an appraisal for $10,000. And uh, for an area directly behind there, it's 1.3 acres. And <coughs> I said, uh, as we were talking, I asked him how to access that property since uh, there is no city access and you can't access it from uh, the uh, highway. And he said, well, there's a description there. And I said, yeah, but I think that description's for that 40 feet. So he went over to the engineer's office and confirmed, yeah, that, that there is no access to the property. Except yeah. through his property. Except, except through the existing property. So he said, I, I better look at it again. He came back with the second appraisal and said, based on the fact that it's not accessible, except to the property owner uh, up front, uh, he said, my appraisal was $7,000. Uh, so I said, well, Based on that, that's what I was present to the city council. And uh, well, the nice thing about it, get back on the taxes. It will go back on the tax road eventually. At that value. Uh, yeah. So that's good. Any questions or comments? Entertain a motion to ex accept the bid of $7,000. And he's agreed to this, right? Yes, Johnson. Mr. Thompson. Thompson. Yeah. yeah, Tony. I, I don't care either way here, but yeah. are we just accepting to all agree that it's worth seven thousand dollars tonight, or are we uh, selling it, or I'm what, what are we doing here tonight? We're selling it to Mr. Thompson for seven thousand dollars. That was he expressed that's, that's the recommendation. And he said we're going to get rid of it. So okay, so that's what we're doing. We're yes. we're making an offer to him of seven thousand dollars for that property. Yes, I mean for the appraisal. For the, not a praise price. He, he had wanted to bring up also the fact, because Jay and I met with him yesterday, yeah. and he wanted us to make sure that we realized that he had been taking care of that property for all these number of years that he's been out there. But he also said that he has also been utilizing that facility rent free to park his trucks on there. So, yeah. <coughs> I would move to accept that evaluation to sell it to. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman Kingle. Okay, okay. Uh, the motion to accept the $7,000 offer for the plan to TNR trucking uh, by uh, Councilman Drayball and it was second by Councilman Gingler. Any further discussion? No further discussion, those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion carried. Next item on the agenda was the uh, part of the revised agenda and uh, an intake pump and I can't find my paperwork here. How much was that for? Well, 12,507. Okay, here it is. Plus break. Any questions for Jim? I've got a question, Jim. What does what is a brass Having to do with discouraging zebra mussels? Uh, zebra mussels do not like to attach themselves to it. And where most of the Kansas lakes and ponds are being inundated with them, including Wakanda, you know, it's a, just a fail safe to help keep our club. Kind of like I don't like Brussels sprouts. <laughs> <laughs> This is our only pump to supply water to the city of Boyd or bring it into the treatment plant? No, we actually have three pumps down there, but uh, the one is the new pump that's on the water rights that we're trying to get figured out because it's not pumped up to what it's supposed to. So it's still down. This is our main pump and that's you know going down on us. It's starting making noise. And so we have just the one pump now that brings water from the river up to the plant. Okay. If something would, and it's about 10 years old. So if something would happen to it, uh, unless we get a hold of some irrigated uh, farmers with irrigation pumps, you know, to pump it up the river, which is in part of our emergency plan, <laughs> uh, you know, we have no other way of getting water up to the plant to treat it. Okay. What? There's a question here from yeah. Beth Bonnier. Have you have you found any signs of zebra mussels in our piping piping yet? Not to any big degree, but they have been making themselves known up at the lake. 
Well, right. I mean, there's there's nothing in our pumps. You've, have you gone into our pumps and found any evidence of zebra mussels in our machinery? No, not yet. No, I, I haven't actually taken the pumps apart, but from reports we get back from the rebuilders, they haven't mentioned any anything of any significance. So even if there is, it's not a con real concern yet. This is just kind of a cautionary measure because the new pump we did specify with grass green, and since we're going to have to pull this one out and repair it, we just will put the precautionary on it. How, how, how tight is that grass screen? Because I know zebra mussels start off, I've got a pontoon up in the lake, and it's yeah. full of zebra mussels all over itself. I know they, they start off really small. Is, I mean, is, is, is they, this is a They can actually that? get in through the screen because they are so small, but it, this keeps them from attaching onto the screen and blocking the screen. Once they get through it, they'll go through the pump and on up and, you know, we'll get the little buggers up the plant. <laughs> how, how long do we cover this? Any idea? Uh, they, I think I put it on the revised area. I talked to Douglas and they said they could probably have a crew out here this week yet because, and then it will probably take approximately, they'll, they'll fast track it, but I'm still guessing on the safe side of two two weeks or so. Okay. Because, you know, I mean, we've we done need a lot of business with them and, you know, they're good, they've been good to us and you know, vice versa and, you know. We need to get it fixed. And, or you're telling me we're kind of about down to one pump now. Is he going to? Yeah. Now, we have a pump enough to keep us in water till we get two pumps running up to stuff? Or? Hey, I, I've got three or four guys there that are bigger than I am that give them five gallon bucket in each hand. And okay. <laughs> we'll keep you in water. But uh, uh, I, I did hear back from uh, Douglas Pump about six o'clock tonight. And he didn't get hear back from the manufacturer of the screen yet. But for that size of one, it's 14 inch, it would approximate about $800 for that screen. So that'd be on top of the 12, uh, 12 five. Yeah. Um, since we got you up here, I, I, I wanted you to know that I've been getting some complaints about discoloration. And I know you're flushing a lot of sewer mains. Are you expecting that discoloration to clear up anytime soon or? Uh, I haven't. I haven't heard any complaints since the flush, and yeah, I heard some too about yellowish water, mm -hmm. and they, I haven't heard any anything about uh, odor or anything, but uh, no, no, I've addressed true. them, and uh, we're thinking, you know, some some from flushing that something's been working back and forth a little bit, and we're hoping that we got it flushed out now because I haven't heard of anything. Uh, for probably a week. I, just today, I had one person complaining who lives up by uh, the Ackerman edition. Oh, okay. Well, it, yeah. I mean, there still might be a little bit floating around, but there's no color going out of the plant. And so, if it persists, I would recommend maybe have him give me a call and we'll have that area reflushed again. Okay. Well, no. Jim, didn't we just put in that third pump this year, or earlier this year, down there? Is that, we're talking about the same one out of the river? Yeah. Okay. okay, that was at the end of last year, and that was that pump with the new water right. Yeah. Come to find out after they got it all in, what it was spec to put out coming up to the plant, it won't do. And so they're trying to figure out, you know, what we can do to either We'll either have to live with it or we can upgrade it to do what it has to do because apparently there's more friction head in the line than what we've been used to and the pumps that we've had down there have been oversized so they they didn't have any trouble you know pushing past it but this one was oversized just enough to put it on the edge to where it's not strong enough to push it past it. We're, that pump uh, would only pump about 1.4 million at max, and our plant is rated at 
So, but so we're that, working with them to see if we can. The cheapest way to upgrade it, or you know, since that was a fifty-seven thousand dollar project, you know, we're looking at the best way to upgrade it, and you know, without spending huge bunch more money. So the pump isn't doing what they said it would do. It's doing what, what it's doing what the manufacturer and everything says it would do, but apparently we have more head loss in our lines coming up to the plant than just an open pipe would. And the other two pumps are bigger. Than that. Yes, yes. The one, well, the one that we're discussing now that needs rebuilt is 1,600 gallons per minute. The one that we're using right now is 1,400 gallons per minute. And this one was spec'd in at 1,275 gallons per minute. <coughs> that new one was spec'd in, which in, you know, if everything had been correct, would have been plenty big enough. But we found out that we we have some issues with, uh, you know, more head than we anticipated. We knew that we had. Right. Yeah. So are we just asking for the $12,507? Well, uh, plus the that's cost of the screen. Plus the screen. Yeah, well, that's under, that would come under your signature limit, though. You could sign for that. We don't have to have that as a part of this. You don't have to for whenever you get the information on it. You can just yeah, work yeah, that yeah. out. <clears throat> but it also says in the notes that the price is being provided prior to inspection and there may be more or less repair needed. Is that not going to change the price? Yes, it could possibly. We're hoping that we caught it soon enough. We had Mike Douglas come up here and actually look at it, and we were hoping we caught it soon enough that there shouldn't be any hidden surprises. He anticipates that uh, both spider bearings, that the main supports that keep it centered, and since those are worn, he anticipates there's wear on the impeller and bowl, that he'll have to replace the impeller and bowl, spiders, and the shaft in there. And then the old box of coat and everything. To, uh, so we're hoping we caught it soon enough. I can't say positively. After they get it done and inspected, then we'll have a sure answer. So, that being said, what are we actually approving? We're approving the expense to repair the one that needs work not, on. Not an amount. I thought it was approving $12,507. And that what we're asked to approve? That's to be more or less though. That's why I'm yeah. asking. And then the screen. So what do you want, Karen J? I think you should approve for the amount stated. We'll yeah. deal with it. Okay. I make that motion. The move by council will throw that we uh, uh, approve the expenditure from Douglas Home in the amount of twelve thousand five hundred and seven dollars to have a second. I'll second it. Second by Councilman McMillan. Uh, any further discussion? No further discussion. Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed same. Motion carries. Next time on the uh, agenda this evening is adjournment. Entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Been moved by Councilman Ponto that we adjourn. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Councilman McMillan. Further discussion? Those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same. <coughs> We're adjourned. We'll now go into the uh, work section. Uh, Katie's not here at this time. Uh, I want to point out the uh, Treasurer's report was in here this evening. If you have a chance to look at that. Uh, next is Jay. Yeah, I have a couple of things I want to mention. First, uh, well, we've been talking about water, and uh, uh, we will have a water report we would like to present to you on May 17th and uh, uh, review that with, with the council. This is a report I know you've been waiting on for a while, and uh, so we're going to be scheduling that for next meeting. Uh, I need received a call from, that's done with that item, but I received a call from a gentleman saying that uh, in the past, the administrator has made an appointment to uh, Dennis uh, Su Sumate. How do you say Shumate. his name? Uh, uh, Shumate. Shumate. 
S H U M A T E. Uh, I'm still learning my names here with the people here in town. It's going to take a while to know all of them. Uh, but uh, he was saying in the past the administrator has made an appointment to the uh, 12th Judicial District Advisory Board for Community Corrections. And uh, I'd ask uh, Andrew if he would be willing to do that. And uh, uh, he acknowledged yes that he would. So uh, uh, I think it's uh, a board that. Uh, been perfectly well suited for and we're doing the job of so uh, the uh, also I want to mention that uh, everybody's lined up for a meeting with uh, Mar Marla Flinji on the 11th and uh, uh, that's to meet with her to talk about your expectations for uh, the appointment of a new administrator here. Uh, so I, I'll just why don't you take one of these and just pass it on down. And uh, <coughs> Lee, I don't have your name on there, but you are scheduled for 4 30 yep. uh, after I talk to you on the phone. I think this will give each of you an opportunity to meet with her and Say what you're looking for, what you hope for, and what you don't want. No. There you go. Um, well, one other thing. This is something the mayor mentioned the other day that uh, kind of stuck with me, and that was the fact that in the past, over the last year or the last two years, you've had a, a retreat that involved council and involved staff here. And uh, that usually has happened in June. And you've worked with a man named John Devine. Uh, I think that's his name. Uh, I guess my question is, uh, do you want to do it again? My feeling, I guess my feeling is that I would just as soon wait until we get a new city administrator. I had that thought too. That makes some sense. Okay. Is there a consensus on that? Yeah. Okay. It's like it's kind of good. <laughs> it's a lot of heads. Like, okay. I think it makes sense just to have a long term. Yeah. Because that's right. part of our planning and the direction that we try to take, and you ought to be part of it. Okay. Thank day. you. That's all I had. Okay. Next item on the uh, on the workstation is the uh, contract with Next Tech uh, for hardware and software support. Uh, well, I think we're using I know we're using Next Tech for the police department, and I think that's going pretty well. Cheryl, uh, Becky, you want to come up and address the council with your proposal <laughs> and what you have going? And, and I think Mandy had you come in. To, yes. To, um, have you, you've all got a copy of it, correct? Yes. What we did is kind of did a walkthrough, <clears throat> and we looked at each of the computers, the server, um, everything that pulls your network together and makes it work like it should. At this point in time, you have four computers that really need to be replaced. Once they get to be three years old, you need a pre-year rotation plan on all of your equipment. Your server needs to be replaced. It's several years old as well. <clears throat> your backup, it, you know, we can provide the backup service like we do with the police department where it backs up to a device locally. It's a NAS storage device on the network and it backs up to two of our facilities. So if there was fire, storm, lightning, whatever, and your facility here was damaged, we can get you a copy very quickly from our facility back down and get you back up and running. The hardware that I'm proposing to replace are four computers, the server, and your firewall, which your firewall is your sonic wall appliance that blocks the uh, bad things from coming into your network. The one you have now is older, it's discontinued. As of, I think, November, you won't be able to buy support for it anymore. And the new Sonic Walls have gigabit network ports, they have faster internet throughput, 
So you may see some better performance as well on the network with that. The uh, virus protection on all workstations and on the server will be part of this. We have right now two wireless access points, one up here, one downstairs. They are Linksys, they're not that secure. If we put up the Arubas that we usually put in, they're secure, we can set up a guest network. <coughs> we could also set it up so that if you needed to access the network, you could, and it'd be secure. It'd be encrypted so that no data that you don't want to get out can get out. Um, the, the whole system, and then there's two computers, Jay's and Mandy's, that are fairly new, that we just put them under managed, kind of like we did at the police department. We had a couple out there that we know where we just manage those and they're ready to replace them, then we'll roll them into the, the agreement. Then battery backups, Microsoft Office, antivirus for every computer. That way, everybody's got the newest version of Office. They've got battery backups to protect them and the antivirus for more protection as well. To install this, all the labor's covered. Any problems with the equipment that technically next tech owns that is a full-blown task, not the two managed ones, hard drive goes out or you know it needs to be replaced for whatever reason, that's on us. <coughs> Breaks down, it's on us. We do monitor these. We make sure that all the Windows updates, security patches are current, and we check that usually every morning to make sure all those little bells and whistles are marked in green. Um, your old equipment, we will dispose of for you if you would so desire, and then we will provide you documentation. Typically, if you have hard drives that have confidential or sensitive information, there's a facility in Hayes, the tech stack it back there, and those hard drives are shredded, literally, to pieces. And, you know, we just put a switch in here not six months ago. So that's not really included in this, but it's a brand new switch. It should last for three or four years, no problem. Basically, what this does is provides the computer equipment here in the city office with a steady and reliable resource to make sure they're all working at full capacity. If something is needed, we're right here in town. We can be right on it. Now, if it's an emergency, um, call me at home in the middle of the night. I don't you know, I'll get up and see what I can do. So, but we've been doing it now for not quite a year out at the police department, and Dave seems to be very happy with it. Has added a couple of things to it, so it's been working very well. Look, and you're going to do all of this for twelve hundred eighty-seven dollars per month. I didn't say that one here. It doesn't say I'm gonna buy a computer from you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's 1287 per month for 36 month term. <laughs> At the end of that 36 month term, we come in and we say, okay, it's time to renew this. We're gonna refresh all this equipment. So you get new computers, you get new uh, a new server, you get a new firewall, new switch. So you don't have that possibility that you've got a computer sitting over here you kind of forgot about it, and now it's six years old and it's really you need it but all of a sudden it dies and I think we've got one right now that we're having an issue with with Chris I believe so well this really upgrades our our firewalls on the security yes. and and all the information with all the hacking and everything going on within the the country and the computer world, I, I think it's as important that we really improve that as much as anything. We also provide a monthly report, and you know, we can do it again weekly if we need to, of what's been going on and what we're seeing on that sign board. When somebody tried to hack it, is, is it had any issues and things like that. Which is beneficial because a lot of people, they can <coughs> it up, but they don't know what they're looking at. Uh, but this report is broken down so it's, you know, 
fairly simple and easy to understand. So what happens when you if at some point either you guys or us don't want to do business anymore or can't do business anymore, does everything just disappear? We would work with you. I mean, if you decide you want to terminate the contract, then we'll come in and sit down and say, okay, do you want to you know, buy out the, the contract? What do you want to do? Well, it's going to work on both sides, though, because yeah. your company could just fold up tomorrow. I'm not saying that it ever would, but... And you have all of our information stored. <laughs> Actually, even if we've got awesome. your information, we can't read it. Well, it doesn't make any difference whether you read it or not. No, we would not. That would be... But retrieving it, though. That would be a part of our shutdown process if the company were to shut down, would we get that data and back And then to all us. the equipment is belongs to you. So we would have to go immediately looking for new equipment. Not necessarily. I mean, like I said, we'd sit down with you and work out a solution where maybe for a you know, buy out on the hardware, uh, it, it just depends where you're at in that realm of that three year. If it's the end of the three year, you want to just not renew it, just move forward and keep what you got. How many total workstations will this cover? Um, there will be four new, and then two, at this point, Jay and Mandy's that are newer, that will just be managed. We'll just do, you know, make sure they have office and antivirus, and if, and if there's any problems with them, the labor's covered. Parts probably wouldn't be, because they're not under the full-blown task, but all labor would be. Updates and everything will be pushed. Yes. Uh, Offsite, more than likely. And the virus protection would be on each individual station, plus it would be a, on the server? server. Yes. Because yeah. I noticed that there was seven total on that yeah. line, and I just. Yeah, that antivirus is a must. So, especially nowadays, that crypto blocker is going around and it's getting kind of hot people getting in. Cost of it in the technology world. And we offer this service as a way of making sure that networks don't get outdated and that they're protected as much as possible. Because it's hard if you don't have an IT background to know, hey, do I need to replace this? And how old is this? And what do I need? And do I need more RAM? Do I, you know, we know that. If something comes up, you need more RAM in the PCs, it's covered. Andrew? Um, Along with the antivirus and the firewall, are you also monitoring the emails themselves? Uh, no. So spam filtering, anything of that nature, would, but and also viruses contained in attachments to email would not be part of that deal, or? It scans the emails when you for the viruses. We don't monitor the email. No, we do have another service that we can do spam filtering. So. It's, I think it's like two dollars and fifty cents a month per but email address. You know, you mentioned crypto locker and stuff. A lot of these things are initiated by somebody opening up an email that's received yes. on their computer. That oh, you have an Amazon package waiting for you. Well, I don't know about that. And once you get into it, that's when you initiate into the system. It would scan for that, but it wouldn't prevent those emails from coming into the well, system. Well, if it knows that it has a virus, it'll block it. Okay. And it quarantine it. You have another layer of protection in the sonic wall because we put the full mail deal on it as far as your comprehensive gateway security suite. And that includes gateway antivirus, gateway and malware, intrusion prevention, content filtering, um, and you know, several other features. So when you're, the internet's coming in, it goes through the sonic wall first and that will catch quite a bit of it. If it makes it past that, then you have your antivirus on the PCs for a dual layer of protection. And if something does get through, then that's something you're going to do on your side? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we'll, where you're under the uh, agreement, it will be taken care of. Okay. I have seen PCs that need to be rebuilt because of some of these viruses. Some of them have taken two hours to get rid of the virus, and I've seen some take two days trying to you know, recover the data and everything. That, again, is where the good backup comes in. It's very critical. So 
So what do we need to do? Um, I think tonight we just make the uh, recommendation. I think Mandy was uh, wanted to go this way because my understanding, I think our service level had dropped from our previous service company. Uh, since the police department doesn't have no X plus anymore, they charge us additional if they want to come from Manhattan to here now to t just to do quarterly checks. <coughs> And we don't have a level of service with the protection with them that we have. No, we've got a the the wall and stuff like that. Um, and there's really only two technicians that I like that <laughs> really know their stuff. I mean, I mean, they can't even fix your outlook. You know, they're the only two that can really. It doesn't take six times to fix your outlook. 